9815, Brother Shadrach. Please. No, just the one, brother. The heat is on. We don't need any more. No. Yeah. Ninth. Ninth of the the eighth, two thousand and fifteen. We're in the last days and we're at Paradise Now Church, JTCM Mission. Brian Houston, warning again, warning and teaching, enabling the brethren to be aware of what's going on around them. And if the uh, watchman doesn't blow the trumpet exact, the people won't be prepared for what's around and coming. So the trumpet must be sounded with certainty. And most churches today don't sound a, a certain trumpet. You know, there's a certain trumpet that is the Lord's sound. And when the Aboriginal brother that brought me to the Lord, when he sounded the trumpet, it was so certain and so clear to me. I, I just knew because I knew. I don't know how this is, but that's the voice I heard when I was five years old. How can that be? But it was the voice of the Lord. <laughs> I know my sheep. My sheep know my voice. They follow me. I give them plenty of money. No, I give them an easy life. No. I give them eternal life. It's worth the wait. The inheritance is worth the wait. So Brian Houston this morning, mumbling on again about his New Age gospel and uh, telling the, the people to desire to be somebody. Desire to be somebody. The people without a vision, they perish. Well, you know what? I believe that. But he didn't have the right interpretation of it because I don't believe he's led by the interpreter, the Holy Ghost. But he has divers interpretations that he quotes. But uh, without a vision, without a clear view of the Christ, you will perish. I'm talking New Testament now. Unless we have a clear view of Jesus. Most church people don't have a clear view of Jesus because they've got all other debris and paraphernalia in the way. And we've got to get that out of the way, you know, and get under the cloud. Under my cloud, there's a man who believes in God. It has to be. He'll work for me every time I call on his name. Under my cloud. We got to we got to get under that cloud by day and fire by night. We got to get under the anointing. Get under the spout where the joy comes out. We have to get under the humbling hand of the Lord under the established cannon that blasts all the debris away and clears the road of all Endemic and psychological mumbo jumbo paraphernalia. Can you say amen? And there's many, many, many who surf the net and they've got all these conspiracy theories plogging their brain. And this doctor said this, and this doctor said that, and this psychiatrist said this, and this nutcase said that, and this unsaved Jew said this, and this unsaved Jew said that, and the Dead Sea Scrolls are dead. And you know, what if you don't have any beans and, you know, and we're stuck on earth with no beans and the zombies come and, oh, look, eat me. 
<laughs> Just get rid of this body once and for all. Hallelujah. Right. So Brian Houston, Brian Rock and Roll Houston, even went as far as and as low as mentioning the seven pillars of society, you know, and uh, which are business, government, religion, music, education, arts and media. And he said, you've got to be into that, you know, if you're going to be a success. And, and, and it is of the Lord to be involved in the seven pillars of society. I don't believe that. I don't believe I read in the New Testament of any man of God being uh, entangled in the affairs of this world, which are the seven pillars of society, which are music, the arts, education, business, government, religion, media. and uh, But in these seven pillars of society, you know what is not written there? The rock. And he is the pillar of society. Full stop, period. And all and everything is in him. Hey? Look, we have to be single-minded at this time in our journey through this wilderness world. We have to be single-minded. Re religion is just... It, all that does is keep people chained that's what religion does. It just chains us to some agenda. But sooner or later, the dogs break loose off the chains. Sooner or later, they get savage. But righteousness is not like that. The Holy Ghost said to me that righteousness changes character, changes society, and finally, righteousness will Declare your destination, eternal destination. That's a lot of difference between the seven, between righteousness and religion. And religion is one of the seven pillars of society. But in that word religion, you've got multiple. And there's all sorts of crookery going on in the arts and music and education. They're giving certificates to people that can't add up two and two. I've seen it. They're giving certificates to people on sympathy shows, race, all sorts of things. It's not righteous. And he's talking about a, 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 the seven pillars of society. The world is a wicked society. It's renowned through the scripture. Jesus said it himself. That we're seeking and looking forward to anticipating a new society. A new heaven, new atmosphere, new earth, new society where righteousness lives. We look forward to that. We don't have any time to be getting involved with the seven pillars of society. As I said, show me an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher or an evangelist in the New Testament that did. Down through the centuries there has been... Uh, uh, Ministers who come out of Bible colleges and so forth who have involved themselves in the world, but I don't believe they're pleasing to the Lord. I don't. I don't care how great and how many statues have been moulded and made and erected for them. I don't believe they're pleasing to God for one minute. So Brian is Brian is basically a flatterer who knows how to utilise people for his agenda and his financial gain. That's for sure. I don't believe he's doing the... And great marketing skills, Hillsong and Hellsong. They have great marketing skills and business skills. Um, and that's the name of uh, their game at the end of the day. Just on the subject of Hillsong... Uh, Hillsong now have a, a gay choir couple and um, one of them is the choir director of Hillsong Choir in New York City and uh, talks about this chappy 
The news read two days ago on August the 2nd, um, there was an article published about Hillsong New York Church. It had openly, uh, an open, openly out Sodomite church member, Josh Canfield, leading their worship choir with his fiancée, his male fiancée, Russ Kelly, also singing in the choir. I tell you what, it's desperate days. Desperate days. Where people will do anything to put a derriere on a seat because derrieres on seats is money in the pocket at the end of the day for these charlatans. Um, the official position is now that Josh Canfield was a choir leader, but Hillsong said they were not aware of his homosexuality, even though it was reported by the New York Times. <laughs> Obviously, Brian Houston doesn't read the New York Times. Does <laughs> John Canfield proudly said in an interview with Playbill.com, he said, I became truthful with my church. I'm a part of Hillsong, New York City, and I'm one of their choir directors. I also sing on their worship team, and they've been amazing to me. Nothing has changed there now that I'm completely, I've completely come out and told them. Me and my fiancé. Nothing has changed because his fiancé sings in the choir as well. Moving right along. Uh, it's a week tomorrow that uh, I was attacked by a child of the devil in a motor accident riding my car off and I found out the other day when I was collecting my statutory declarations that about the accident that the young man that uh, gave one statutory declaration uh, and witnessed the accident he follows Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? That the Lord Jesus had one of, one of my brothers on the job. And uh, like others have said, it's in the bag, Paul. Don't, don't bother yourself about it. The Lord's sorting it all. You'll be looking good before you know it. And <laughs> yeah. So we just got to wait and see the glory of the Lord. Yeah? Yeah. A little bit more that's going on around us as I blow the trumpet, surely and certainly. One in three men in regards to uh, domestic violence in the country, one in three, I was shocked to see the stats on the news, one in three men are being abused, knived and beaten by their parents female partners or wives. Uh, and when they start to make a complaint, women's groups rise up against them. And it's been said that these men are suiciding. I knew a woman, an abusive woman once. Terrible. they done the knife thing and everything. Yeah. Memories in the corner. No, they're getting no shelters, like the women get shelters, you know. When they're getting abused, they can go to a shelter, you know. They have Jezebel shelters. Uh, uh, no shelters, no counselling, and no sympathy. 
because most of the time men keep it to themselves because of the the macho scene, you know, the male getting... This guy had a 12-inch gash up his stomach where the wife put the knife in and ripped it up his stomach. But still, the police didn't believe. And the, and the authority says, oh, no, we can't accept that. <laughs> and Western Australia, we're going, going west, young man. Western Australian branch of Acts Christian Church. I don't know. That could be AOG, I don't know. Acts Christian Church. Um, the local leader there in Western Australia, Dave Volmer, has been linked. They've closed the church down because he was linked with a pedophile ring. So... We are in the last days. Things are heating up. The heat is on. Heat is on. On the street. The heat is on. And, uh, you know, and Google is a liar. So when people say, I Google this or I Google that, always remember, put the big question mark over the top. Because... Google is basically Satan's dictionary. Can you say amen? Oh, I like that, she says. Yeah. So do I. I love it. Oh, it's gorgeous. Evangelical. You might have heard of, I have, but this was brought to my attention yesterday. Rabbi Zacharias. Yeah? Indian, Indian extraction. Madras, he was born. Rabbi Zacharias, apologist. Leading, leading, defender of the evangelical faith. I'm, like, I'm glad they said that. Not messianic, evangelical. Wow, wiped the brow then. Oh, that's okay then. Applauded by Joyce. No, I got that wrong. He, Rabbi, Rabbi Zacharias, applauded Joyce Meyer as a great Bible teacher. But yet this man is the leading defender of the evangelical faith. Others that are numbered with Zacharias are such as Chuck Swindle, John MacArthur, C.S. Lewis, boo, boo. all Calvinists. You know, once saved, always saved. God is good. God is love. God's going to get you there. No matter what you do, you can live like a dog. It's okay. Only God, only Jesus is perfect. Oh, and Mary. Um, <laughs> and the Pope. Always miss him. <laughs> Sorry about that. Another one that he's numbered with is Chuck Colson. Oh, it's getting worse. Boo, boo. Chuck Colson said that um, Rabbi Zacharias was the great pretender. No, was the great apologist of our time. But yet, I mean, just think of that one quote coming from Chuck Colson a well-known compromiser in American evangelical circles and Pentecostal. Radio evangelism, love him. Chuck Colson said, Rabbi Zacharias was the great. I could interpret that as the greatest. Apologist of our time. But yet, he's so blinded to support word of faith teaching, which is a filthy lie from the pit of hell. Money making filthy lie from the pit of hell. Oh, Joyce, because he was on Joyce Meyer's show. And Jezebel has the dough. Oh, look. She told that little wimp Ahab, didn't she? Don't you worry about it at all. I'll get that block of land for you. 
You leave it to me. And here's old Joyce. He's sucking it up. Applauds Joyce Meyer on her show as a great Bible teacher. Mrs. Joyce Meyer, who said very clearly that Jesus prunes dead branches. You know who else says that? I documented the time and the message he said it on. Carter Conlon of Times Square Church. The one who took the reins from David Wilkerson. Times Square Church. You know, I was thinking the other day, David Wilkerson had a car accident and died. Paul Sheehan had a car accident, rode his car off, and I am standing here today. I think there's something in that. How great thou art. Rabbi Zacharias came out of the theological college. Ontario Bible College. There's your answer, isn't it? Never seen anyone come out of a Bible college with any cutting edge weight. No punch. You know? Nothing. Just all, you know, all withering heights, you know. It's all done. Nothing to excite the martyr in me. You know, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> the unadulterated, perfect doctrine of Jesus excites the martyr in you. Right? If you really do have the Christ, you have a martyrdom character that the Lord wants to bring forward. Selfless character. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of the writings of John. John. On the 9th of the 8th, 2.15, John, John, chapter 11, John chapter 11, hey, we're going to start reading in verse, thirty-nine. Jesus said, oh, pay attention here. When Jesus said, oh, thus says the Lord, glory. Take away the stone. I agree. I agree. That's our message for today. We can take up the collection. No, no. <laughs> it's all in there. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Ah! feel like preaching today. I really do. Jesus said, take away the stone. Oh, look. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a, a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus came back and said, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And our final verse is 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. It's time to lift up our eyes like never before. That's our message today. It's time to lift up our eyes. Hey? John 11. <laughs> John 11. 
39. Take away the stone. And how many of us have all these stones on our road? Right? But the Lord says, all that quarry material has been accounted for at the tree. Everything has been accounted for. All those stones on your path, all those broken vehicles, all those sicknesses, all those troubles, all those uh, uh, um, dreams that never come true. Everything has been accounted for at the tree, as the scripture says, now that everything has been accomplished. All has been accomplished. Now I say it's finished. We don't want to see it any other way because we give room for that serpent of old to come in. Hey? It's been finished for some time now. That which is probably going to start this Thursday or Wednesday, it's already finished. But sad to say the people of the world don't know this. They don't understand that the seven pillars of society are made, all of them, out of chalk. <laughs> and that unless they stand on the rock, all around is sinking sand. And stinking sand. Eh? All around that you, you, you may... You may very well uh, excel in the business pillar of society or the governmental or the religious, the Anglican, you know, Salvation Army religious pillar. You might be high up in that realm. You might be uh, succeeding in the arts or education or... But we're not going to be judged uh, on how we um, performed in the midst of the seven pillars of society. Right? We're going to be judged on how we uh, performed uh, on the rock, if at all. Whether we have been true and faithful servants of the Lord. Right? So we need to blow the trumpet clearly and surely and certainly that those who hear and those who are here today and those who will hear this message will say, hey, I think there's a... I better get my Holy Ghost toolbox out and do a bit of adjusting, if you know what I mean. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, we have to adjust our lives to please the Lord, lest he not be happy. Okay. John eleven thirty nine. 39, Jesus said, oh, I like that. Just like that. Take away the stone. Okay. Take away the stone. You notice there's no hands there, is there, of the Lord? Because he does things without hands. You know what I mean? <laughs> he created the, that stone without hands. He done it all without hands. And uh, everything on earth is an instrument of the Lord for one reason or another. Amen. Jesus said, take away the stone. And then Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time... There is a stench. Oh, hey. Well, he has been dead for days. Well, there's a lot of church people worried about a bit of a smell, aren't they? And they never get to the uh, mission field. They never meet their call. They just don't get there because they're worried about a bit of stench. Hey. It's a bit smelly over there in the third world country. There's, well, you know, the sewage issue is pretty bad. That's not really my call, you know what I mean? 
And I tell you what, it's not too good a smell on the streets either for 28 years. It stinks, I can tell you. <laughs> but I know a little bit more than just the stink and the stench. Oh, no, God hasn't called me there. I've heard every pastor in the world say that. That's a filthy lie. God has called every pastor to the street. The scriptures say clearly that the great shepherd, he went about seeking to find and save the lost sheep of Israel. Can you say amen? amen? He went searching and seeking. Jesus spent most of his time on the pavement. Can you say amen? amen. Exactly. Lord, by this time there is a stench for he has been dead four days. Oh, look, forget just get rid of those stinking, endemic estimations. We have to clear our mind and clear the road of the debris. We have to get rid of the rubbish, the endemic calculations and estimations of religious people. We have to get rid of it. We're never going to see the glory. We're never going to see the victory. Hey? It's time to lift up our eyes. It's time to look heavenward. Stinking endemic estimations. John 11, 40. What does it say? Jesus said, here we go again. Thus says the Lord. Boy, every time I read that, Jesus said, oh, the hair stands up on the back of my neck. What's he going to say? Did I not say? To you that if you would believe you would there's no maybe could be i don't know you would see the glory so many people they lose track of jesus and it's all because they don't see the glory you know when you see the glory of the lord you don't lose touch you don't lose track you don't drift off and go back to your old edemic ways because when you see the glory, I tell you what, it just lifts you up into another sphere. You're in that zenith with him, you know. You're just, hey, you're just like Job, you know. Uh, I have treasured your word more than my daily sustenance and daily bread. Because that the word used to take him, used to carry him and transport him into the zenith and into the place where he was sown. Even on that ash heap. Eh? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Even on that ash heap, Job was rejoicing. And the devil went out from the presence of the Lord and my Lord God said to him, you can go so far with my servant Job, but then you'll have to quit. And I will show you, O serpent lion, that Job is faithful to me. Go your way and take his everything. But Job remained solid, didn't he? Job wasn't bogged down about the seven pillars of society. They weren't going to help him on the ash heap. Those seven pillars of society would have just trashed him and looked down their nose at him and said, oh, yeah, but Job, you know, he's lost it now. He's not in our arts organisation anymore. You know, we can't have him sitting on an ash heap and being in the government. Oh, what a disgrace. You know what I mean? Oh, can't have Job in our religion anymore. He's a loser. Oh, man, imagine the cardinals seeing one of them on an ash heap in their birthday suit with balls all over them. Dogs, look at them. Oh, we'll have to write him off the uh, registration list. And you can't have him in the music. Oh, no. The village people won't have it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can't stop the music. Nobody can stop the music. I tell you what. They might party till it's 1999, but the Lord's coming and the music. And they'll have to face the music with the Lord Jesus. Amen. There'd be no longer when Job wasn't in the media spotlight as the, you know, the new property owner with lovely children and wife playing the part 
emphasise playing the playing, playing the part of the prosperous man Job's helper, which he wasn't. Not uh, next, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, he is Job copping smack from uh, his wife on the ash heap. You loser, you know. No, Job was on the rock. Job had the the one and all great helper and strength and stability. He was established in the word. That's the message today. We need to be established in the word. We need to believe the word. We need to have a vision and a view and a clear view of the Christ. At least we do, Peru. Right? Not some, uh, uh, some ambitious vision, you know. There is vision and there's ambition. Yeah, remember that article I done, one of the letters of the prophet. That article will go up with today's message onto the uh, tube, so that people will be able to have a look. Vision and ambition, two different things. When God gives you a vision, when Father gives you a vision, when you have a heavenly vision, it's got nothing to do with materialism or the arts or the government or being a part of the government or being a politician when you're supposed to be a saint it's got nothing to do with any of that it's got nothing to do with uh, uh, um, being a a, um, a, a media or um, uh, tart or anything of any nature when the Lord gives you a vision everything else is just like blacked out you know it's all white out and out and all you see is Jesus standing at Father's right hand. <laughs> hey? I must tell Jesus, Jesus alone. Oh, hallelujah. I must tell Jesus all of my trouble. Jesus will help me, oh, Jesus alone. Yes, in that car accident tomorrow week, and I looked up and seen that cloud. I just thought to myself, Jesus, I have to tell you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I told on that bloke, you know. I went and told on him. I told Jesus. He said, don't worry, son, I'll sort it out. I was driving home yesterday and the, the sky was just perfectly blue. But you know what? Just above my roof, just right in front of me was this huge, plump, white cloud. I seen it again. And the Lord was saying to me, cloud by day, fire by night. Believe in me and it will be. Under my cloud, there's man who does believe in God. You know, it's got to be. When I believe what he said to me, it will be. I know on the mark cloud. And it says here, John 11:41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. They were obedient. They done the dirty work. Jesus didn't want to get his hands dirty there. He said, take it away. Go, take it away, remove it. See, when we walk with Jesus and we believe in him, that's what Jesus does. He takes it away. When we repent, genuinely repent, he takes our sin away. Lamb of God, eh? <laughs> who came he didn't come so you could be successful in the midst of the seven pillars of society he came to take away your sin that Holy Ghost dumpster has come hey? arise shine for the dumpster is here <laughs> and the glory of the Lord has risen upon me. Whew. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for doing no wrong. Hey? 
Blessed are you. Spirit of God and of glory will rest upon thee. They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted, lifted his eyes. See? That's the punchline. That's the kicker. Jesus himself, the man Jesus, lifted his eyes and seen the cloud. Under my cloud, there's a man who does believe in God. It has to be. If we believe, we'll see the glory of the King. Each day, under that cloud, lifted his eyes and looked unto Father. Can someone say amen? Luke. Let's go to Luke. Jesus always looked to Father. Hey? And he also wants us to be one with him as he is with Father. Let's go to the writings of Luke 22. You need to pause on this. You need to put the pause button and really look to the Lord on what I'm going to say here. It has a certain amount of depth. Luke 22 and the verses 42. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Then an angel appeared. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more. <laughs> Be, being in agony. Ooh. He prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Someone say amen. amen. Hi. You can say amen, oh my, or why. Now, what I want you to see here is that when things get a little bit rough and we pray, you know, everyone thinks... Um, is going to happen in the morning. Okay. It's going to happen the next day. It's not like that. But here's the man, Jesus. He's reached a certain place in his prayer where it says he was in agony. The heat was on. Now, do we press through? Do we pray more? Okay. We have to pray more than that. That's a good indication of how uh, um, how perfect his prayer was, how diligent, and how uh, Jesus believed. He went past the agony zone. And into more prayer, past the more prayer, into more earnest prayer. It has to be earnest. The prayer has to be earnest. If we repent, if we re if we repent, he will take our sin away. Never to be seen again. If our our repentance is earnest, 
if our repentance is genuine. Outside of that, we're mocking God. We're rendering his power void. When we repent, right? when we repent, this is all part of the end times trumpet blowing series, you know? And when we repent, forgiven, cleansed, delivered, empowered, nothing missing. Otherwise, we have reason to go back. And Jesus is made a fool. Forgiven, cleansed, delivered, empowered. On genuine earnest repentance can someone say amen? amen we as i said the title of the message today it's time for us to lift up our eyes and every one of us here and everyone listening by youtube or disc or whatever facebook everyone has and is going to have stones on the road this week of some weight or description. So where are we going to look? Oh, I'm going to ring my best friend. Oh, look, you might as well ring the seven pillars of society. <laughs> you got to look out! Woo! It's got to be! If I believe, I'll see the glory of the King. I know under that cloud, under the anointing, under his hand, believing in him, looking unto the author and the finisher. Don't look anywhere else, because you go down. Deeper and down. Yes, being in agony, pressed on, prayed more, prayed earnestly. Then he broke in to clog and his, his, his sweat started to congeal. I don't believe it was blood, I believe it was congealed sweat. Just describing it as thick as blood. Falling down to the ground like great drops of blood. And when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping. Wow. Such a, a, a diligence from the man Jesus, the pastor Jesus. And then he came and seen the congregation asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go breaking my heart. I couldn't if I tried. Well, I've been around before. So, let's turn in our Bibles to Hebrews 12, please. Hebrews 12. Under that cloud, there's a man who does believe in God. It's got a buddy. If I believe, I'll see the glory of the King for sure under that cloud. See, I, I, I'm so grateful that I have been anointed by the anointed one, Jesus the Christ, and I am under the anointing of my shepherd, Jesus the great shepherd. That is everything. Hey? And clouds in the day and fire by night, all symbolic, as I said to a Seventh day Adventist African, only on Friday. Two days ago. I'm Seventh day Adventist. Oh, no, really. Thought, oh, here we go. You know, I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. Just when I'm about to get myself together, a seventh day comes along and ruins my day. I don't know if I'll ever recover. I had to just 
lift my eyes. <laughs> I had to lift up my eyes to the heavens. Hey? He's raving on about his Sabbath day. And I said, oh, yeah, I suppose you do the tithing thing too. Yeah, we do that. I said, look, buddy, you are living in the shadow. I said, you know, when I walk along, my shadow is behind me. Hello, hell, oh. My shadow is behind me. That's where the Old Testament is. But I'm in the substance. When I walk along, I'm in me, you know, like I'm... Yeah, yeah, you got that swag happening, you know. All right. I'm in me. But we need to be in Christ. We need to be in the substance, not the shadow. And he just didn't quite register, you know, with the religious people. They're so, you know, they're just so seven pillars of society ish, you know. E. They just got to get out of this world, you know, get out of their mind and into the mind of Christ. Yeah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, well, I got one, amen. It's better than the poke in the eye of the brick, isn't it? Oh. Hebrews 12 and the verse is Therefore, 12 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great, and uh, that cloud again, cloud of witness. Ooh, what a witness the cloud is. <laughs> Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Come on. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him Jude the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of Father. Can someone say amen? Yes. Hey? Amen. Let me say, in verse 1 there, talks about weight. Weight. Talk about stones. That's what that's talking about. Not gallstones or kidney stones. It's talking about stones being removed out of the way by the Lord. Hebrews 12, 1, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. This week, the devil's going to put heat on you. He's going to put weight on you. There's going to be stones in the way. What we do is we lift up our eyes. We lift up our eyes. And we look unto the author and the finisher. We don't go to some clown, some devil clown, that says, oh, but what if? Oh, oh, I don't like your chances. Oh, I've heard it all week. I just say, get out of my face, you unbelieving thing. You rock lobster. <laughs> get out. I prefer to keep it to myself and lift my eyes up unto the author. Because he's the author. He's the finisher. Hey? You can't go to anyone greater than that. In the beginning, eh? we read it in Genesis. God said, what did he say now? Let there be light on the situation. we got to go to the Lord. And Jesus looked up and said, Hallelujah. Eh? Let's go back to John for a minute. Hold your finger in Hebrews. John 11. And Jesus, 41. And Jesus lifted up his eyes 
to the government. <laughs> Lifted up his eyes to the seven pillars of society and said, No! Lifted up his eyes and said, Father! I know you heard me. Do you believe he hears you? <laughs> oh, he hears you. But he's he hears you, but he wants to see if you believe him. That's what he's looking for. He hears the believer. Oh, it's just like this, and it's just like that. Hey, you got your eyes on someone else. You got your eyes elsewhere. You need to lift your eyes up. Um, I was driving along in the last week and as I was driving along, your eyes were on the road and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, each time I looked up into the blue skies, they were smiling at me. Nothing but blue skies did I see. I, I just started to break into joy. I challenge you, everyone listening to this message, as you go home or drive down the road and you take your eyes and lift them up just a touch when it's safe to do so, just for a second, and you'll and as you drop them back down, you'll perceive the difference between up and down in the world. The Lord will give you a revelation. Standing in my backyard, looked up. How beautiful. And you know what? Everything, just my troubles just rolled away as I started to sing in my heart, Jesus, beautiful, Prince of Peace, my mighty God. Hey? When I think of you, my Lord, I think of all the trees, the long, the short, the fat, the thin, the shrubs and all the twigs. Everything you've given us is beautiful, but there's not one thing I can see as beautiful as the nothing and the joy and the peace because he meets his word Isaiah 26 3 those whose mind is stayed upon those who look up to the Lord and lift their eyes to the Lord hey, and say Father I know you heard me <laughs> he knows everything. He's omniscient. No one can fool him. But you know what? I've been talking to people on the phone or right face to face. And you know what? They never heard a thing I said. <laughs> He's on another planet. I've had to say to people, what did I just say? Uh, terrible, isn't it? But I know Father hears me. He will hear. If we're genuine, he will hear us. Hebrews 12 and the verses 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a crowd, surrounded by so great, brother, a cloud of witness. We have witnesses starting in Genesis, going all the way to Revelation. Telling us the same thing. Look up. <laughs> Meshach, Shadrach, and the big Negro. We don't need to answer you because we're looking up. Things are looking up. <laughs> no, they're not. Not without Jesus. <laughs> hey? Job was looking up. Oh, what are you doing here, you little curse that God of yours? Things are looking up, love. Things are looking up. Do you understand what's happening? I mean, all my lady friends, they don't talk to me no more. I don't get no invites to the tea parties. You, you're ruining me. You are ruining me. 
enjoy it. Say that. No. <laughs> Job just turned around and said, "Come on, you know better than that, wife." Jesus turns uh, nightmares into happy meals. <laughs> just look up. Stop looking at your navel. Stop looking in your address book so who you can find. Oh, I'll ring my bestie. Look, if Jesus ain't your bestie, yeah, you're, 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 you're shipwrecked. You're finished. He has to be your bestie. <laughs> Woo! Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Woo! When my Jesus come, yeah. When my Jesus come, whoo, he took my sins away. Woo, happy day. Mm -mm. Hebrews 12. Oh, happy day. Mm. Oh, happy day. Mm -hmm. When my Jesus comes, he took man. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud, so many, 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 many witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every worry, every pain, heartache, resentment, everything of the past. Every doubt, every fear, put it on the side and walk on. Every weight and the sin which so easily put that aside have nothing to do with sin. And let us run with endurance because you won't be able to endure unless you do that. You won't endure. You'll collapse. You'll have the satanic um, uh, defibrillator out. You'll be on the side of the road like a dead skunk. Stinking the high heaven. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking as you run. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We got quality faith given to us. Because he's the author and the finisher, it must be the best of the best of the best, which doesn't file on faith obedience. Who for the joy that was set before him. Oh, it's a joy, eh? He was looking ahead at the tree, you running and winning. You know, my mum, my dad was, you know, he was on probably drinking or something, doing something, playing cricket or... But my mum used to come and watch me race, you know, at the sports carnival, and I'd run like a little rabbit, you know. He would come on, love, hurry up. And I went, uh... You know, get the ribbons and take them to mum, you know. If they weren't blue, they were red. I'd settle for nothing else. It's either first or second. And the Lord, for the joy that was set before him, hey, the joy of watching us run the race of faith, he endured the cross for that reason. For the pleasure of watching us run and win and receive our crowd. Despise the shame. There's a lot of shame Jesus had to go through so we could be glorified with him. And sat down at the right hand of Father. Now he sits there watching us run. Every day is a jubilee day and every day is a sports day. Okay? Always to love it. Me and Marcia, she's a little Aboriginal girl. Oh, we used to love sports day. You know? We used to run barefoot, you know. <laughs> oh, like lightning bolts. We were like lightning bolts, me and her. 
and sat down at the right hand, and he's sitting there at Father's right hand watching us run. Saying, come on there. Yeah. Go, you little beauty. Go, you good thing. Hey? For consider him into the bargain. Consider him who endured the hostility that he endured. Did no wrong. He copped it from sinners. Lest you become weary and discouraged. All because we're not looking up. It's time to lift up our eyes. And keep them on him. Keep them on the Lord. Can someone say amen? Hey? Amen. Old Testament, New Testament witnesses. Glory to the Lamb. Galilee Lamb. Let me read. Let me read um, 3 John. Let's go to 3 John. Just to compliment our message today. 3 John. Let's go to 3 John and we're going to take one verse. 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children run in truth. Walk. Run. Fight. Pray. All in truth. You know, some people are so hardened of heart, they even lie when they're praying. They even bend the truth just that little bit to try and get what they want. That is just dangerous, you know. We're praying to a God and the God that's omniscient. If we can't unload it before him, we're not going to be honest with anyone. Honesty is a huge uh, part of victory, overcoming sin and being more than an overcomer. We have to be honest. We can't mix it. We can't say, oh, 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 I want to do your will, Father, but we've got our own agenda. It cannot be. We have to surrender in order to get the victory. Can someone say amen? No greater joy is there. Then, look, the Holy Ghost was moving through John in this third letter. And the Spirit of God, God himself was saying, I get great joy out of my people walking in the truth. If you really want to please the Lord, you have to walk in the truth. We can't have this, oh, I made a mistake. I mean, mistakes are mistakes. We don't have to repent for a mistake because it's a mistake. It's, it's, it's an unconscious thing. We are accountable for the conscious and the known. We're not accountable for the unknown and the unconscious. Can someone say amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Isaiah 40. Can we go there, please? Isaiah 40. Oh, hallelujah. Time. It's time to lift up our eyes. Oh, look. Wouldn't apply to me. Uh, wouldn't apply to me at a more perfect time. Glory, <laughs> Doubt is all around. Isaiah 40, verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by numbers. He calls them all by name. He's talking about the stars. By the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is missing. But we plant plants, crummy old plants in the garden. And they grow a little bit as a seedling and some old crow or something comes along and nips it and takes it away, whatever it may be. The farmers wrestle with the, the nature and, and, and the... the um, the birds and the animals and insects, they wrestle daily with them. 
But here's the Lord with his stars. Named them all. Put them in place. Not one missing. No one's going to steal from the Lord. This is where we're lifting up our eyes. Lift up your eyes on high. You can keep your Sky TV. I'm lifting up my eyes on high. Looking unto the Lord. The author and the finisher. Hey? And see who has created. Have a look in the sky and you will see clearly. This is God of mine can do on a clear night. And the stars have been out beautifully in the last month. Surely he can help me. <laughs> Surely he can deliver me. Surely he can strengthen me. Surely he can. There's no doubt about it. He can. And see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by numbers. Man. Multitudes of stars. And poor old ignorant man and their seven pillars of society. Well, you know, just sort of going along there with oh, religion and government and um, art. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and the sciences. And what else we got in the pillars? Uh, we got business and education, media, mm, yeah. and uh, we're actually we're working on putting a kangaroo on Mars, and we're going to see if he still um, can go. Uh, you know, like Skippy the bus kangaroo. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Skip. <whistles> <whistles> <laughs> Time to lift. Lift the eyes! Woo! Lift the eyes! Up! Yeah! Woohoo! Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, it's a happy finding. Happy day when Jesus comes. Ah! When my Jesus comes, he took my sins away. Ooh, happy day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy day. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, ah. Oh, Lord. When Jesus comes. When we lift our eyes up out of the stinking, rotten, troubled seven pillars of society and all the crookery and, and harlotry, religions of man, and just put it all aside, remove the stones from the road by faith in Christ Jesus, we will see the glory of the Lord shining through and say, I am with thee always even to the end of the age. No matter what comes your way, I will turn around for you. Just like you spun around on that road, I will turn it all around for all things work to good for them who love and obey the Lord Jesus the Christ and are called according to his purpose. Look up. Look unto me. Can someone say amen? amen? Psalm 121. Oh, happy day. Ooh, happy day. Ah, happy day. Oh. Psalm 121, verse 1. I will lift up my eyes. Woo! To the hills. Woo! From where comes my help? My help comes from... Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. He made heaven and earth. And earth. He made it all. 
He made heaven and he made earth. Oh, but he can't help me. No, there's such a state. He's dead. He can't help him now. Should have been here earlier. What? That is a demic. That is a demic thinking. We want to think messianic. We have to put on the mind of Christ. <laughs> and we see things glorious. No matter how ugly it looks. It's glorious. You will see the glory of the Lord if you will only believe it, everybody said. Amen. Look, we can't... I'll just finish by saying this. We can't go along and expect to get to heaven and we want to try and use the word of God as a cop-out. You know, I'm weak in the faith. We, weak in the faith is not has nothing to do with known sin. People who are weak in the faith are either babes or growing, or both. That's what weak in the faith means. Weak in the faith has nothing to do with known sin. But the churches teach that. Oh, he's just weak in the faith. <laughs> You're not weak in the faith. You're mature in the word. You know the word. Weak in the faith is a babe in Christ. Weak in the faith is a growing, haven't come to that stage yet where they are, are fully aware that that is sin. That's weak. Someone say amen. amen. You don't have to say amen. You can say, oh my, oh my. I'm going to say hallelujah anyway. No matter what anyone says. Hey? To say otherwise is to endeavour to justify your sin. And that's like, oh no. Yeah. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for everything. that We're going to go forward this week, Lord. And there's going to be stones along the way. And they have to be removed. They're too heavy for us. We have to look up. The devil don't put light stones in front of us. The devil puts heavy stones. He don't want us to be victorious. But we're going to look up to you. Lord God Almighty Yahweh. And we know you will hear us and that stone will be removed at the request of our Saviour Jesus, the Christ and everybody's head. Amen. And amen, and amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord.